Before we wrap up this lesson on templates, I want to show you what's basically a shortcut to some of the manual work that we've done in order to configure Jinja within our Flask application. So let's review the steps we took in order to set Jinja up first. That way we'll have a good idea of what's being replaced when we use this shortcut. To use Jinja, we first had to import the Jinja2 module. We did that at the top of our file along with our other imports. I then had to build up the template directory, a variable that held on to the template directory using os.path.join. Um, and we, we, uh, we set up our template directory to be called templates at the root level of our project. I then had to create a Jinja2 environment using a file system loader that would uh, be able to pull in templates via that template directory. And we called that Jinja env. So these template dir and Jinja env variables were global variables that were available throughout our application. When I wanted to actually render a template, I would have to first fetch that template by name by using the Jinja environment and the get template method of that environment. Uh, and once I fetched that template, I could then render it and return the rendered template as a string in the HTTP response. And uh, if I actually happened to have some parameters that I wanted to pass in that template, I would use those in the render method. I would pass those in as, uh, as key value pairs there. So there is a shortcut method I can use that will, um, that will work the same way as this manual setup as long as we have the same sort of assumptions in place. In other words, as long as we are working in the templates directory, that's where we're placing our templates, and as long as we want to use the audio escape equals true um, as, a, as a flag for our environment, then we can use the shortcut method. So the shortcut method we're going to have to introduce by importing it from the Flask module. So up at the top of our file, let's go ahead and import render underscore template. This, uh, this function lives in the Flask module, and it's going to replace all of the manual work that we've done right here. So let's just go ahead and use it um, in one specific spot. I'm going to come down into the index, and here I'm rendering the hello form.html template without any specific parameters being passed into that template. So instead of saying template.render, I can replace that call with a render template call, and then I have to tell render template the name of my template. And then once I do that, I can get rid of that previous line. So we reduce those two lines, the fetching the template and then the rendering of template with this one single line. Let's go ahead and see that that worked the same way. Okay, and that indeed rendered our hello form page in the exact same way that we saw previously. So let's go ahead and go back and make a few more changes. I want to go ahead and refactor this entire file to use render template in place of these global variables, and then I'll clean that up and get rid of those. So we'll be entirely reliant on render template throughout this application. Okay, so um, if we have a situation like this where we're passing in data to the template, that's also, um, that can also be handled by render template. Let's see how we can do that. I can replace that template.render with render template and then I also, as before, have to put in the name of the template. And then as ad any additional parameters can be listed after the template name. And then I can remove that. Okay, and let's go ahead and do that everywhere else that we have template.render within our file. Okay, we probably have one or two more down here. Um, yeah, there's one right here. So let's replace that. And let's see, one more. Okay, I think that's it. Let me just double check as we scroll to the top that I didn't miss any template.renders. Okay, and then once I'm no longer using the template dir and Jinja env global variables, I can go ahead and kill those two. And finally, notice I won't need my import Jinja2 anymore because that all will be handled by render template, which is part of Flask. So Flask and Jinja work really well together. So Flask uh, provides this render template. It's a part of Flask rather than the Jinja module, um, just as a, a shortcut to some very common usage patterns. 
Okay, so let's go back, we'll save our code, make sure our application's still running. Looks like it, it is, it's restarted a few times as we made some changes. And then um, let's try out some additional views within our application. So um, let's try out our, our form processing and then our validate time. All right, so uh, let's see. And then it looks like I spelled render template wrong. Let me go back and fix that. There we go, so that works. And then I'll try one more, validate time. And see that that renders correctly too. So going forward, you can use render template in place of that more manual Jinja setup process. When you do though, make sure that you're aware of the assumptions that render template will expect your templates to be in a directory called the templates at the top level of your project. It will also turn on um, auto escape equals true for you as well. So uh, go ahead and use that whenever you want, want to use those default options. Otherwise, you can use a much more manual uh, configuration method as we saw previously.